Good evening, Primetime Squad. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How is everybody doing this Monday evening? I know it's late. <laughs> I know it's late. I couldn't actually get away from some of the other YouTubers' um, videos. It's like so much going on in these streets. Um, if you peruse these streets long enough, you know exactly what I'm referring to. <laughs> everybody's uploading videos and everybody's throwing shade and accusations and uh, restraining orders and all kind of stuff in these YouTube streets. So um, I got kind of caught up and didn't realize how late it was getting. But anyway, I wanted to uh, bring you my review of the Housewives of Atlanta tonight. So, um, I hope you guys all got a chance to watch it. We actually had to wait, you know, a little longer for this episode because of the fact, you know, last weekend it didn't play. Be I mean, it didn't show, um, they didn't show the episode last weekend because, of course, you know, the Super Bowl and what's more important, the Super Bowl or the Housewives. <laughs> So, I'm sure you know <laughs> it was the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. But, anywho, um, did you guys watch the last episode? If you did, let me know what you think about it. Um, also, you know, hit me up in the chat. Let me know who's watching. You know, give me a shout out or whatnot. But, anyway, um, this episode was really an emotional episode. And, um,. A lot of people was going through a lot of personal things, you know, in their lives this last episode. But we're going to jump right into it and, you know, discuss it. Um, at the beginning of the show, well, you know, last last show or the last episode they was on, Nene was, you know, in her fee-fees. She was dealing with, you know, her and Greg's situation. You know, Greg is, you know, trying to get through this cancer. He got another uh, surgery coming up. And when they had thought that he was free and clear of cancer, when they did a test, um, they found out that there are some really, really micro um, size, you know, basically cancerous cells, you know, and they was talking to him about getting chemo. Greg still doesn't want to get chemo. Nene's like, okay, whatever Greg wants to do, that's what we're going to do. I'm not going to pressure him. It's his body. It's his cancer, you know. So you got to let people deal with, you know, their sickness the way they want to deal with it. So that's what they're still going through right now. And last episode, she had got into it with Tanya. Um, that was real bad. That was real bad. So anyway, we picked up, you know, there, they started off with Portia. And Portia, you know, she's pregnant. Um, she's getting bigger every day. And... She is, I mean, you can really tell that she's really, really happy, you know, with her situation that she's in. Portia has been wanting a baby forever. She has been wanting a successful relationship forever. And I truly think that Portia's really happy, you know, albeit all the things we keep hearing about Dennis and his past. Um, Last episode, she was talking to Dennis, you know, before she went out of town. And she was showing her concerns, like... Dude, why is you still, you know, in contact with your ex after we had made promises to each other that we were going to cut ties to all our exes? Obviously, he was still, you know, in communication with his, like, friendly communication with his ex. So, anywho, um, she had received a big old bouquet of flowers and was really excited. And, you know, she called him. They talked, you know, chopped it up. It seems all is well with Portia. I mean, I'm extremely happy for Portia. You know, regardless of all the stuff that Candy was spreading around, you know, about Dennis and his M.O.s, like, tattooing everybody's, you know, all his ex's names on his body, which I still don't understand. <laughs> I mean, I can see you having one tattoo of somebody in your life, you know, a significant other, a wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatnot. But every person that you date, they got to be dragging it. Uh-uh. <laughs> they got to be dragging it. I can't possibly believe he got everybody's, all the exes of his, you know, their name on tattooed on his body somewhere. But, you know, along with the uh, Rollies, you know, him buying all his 
uh, girlfriend's Rolexes and just different things. And on top of that, you know, still being in contact behind Portia's back, you know, with his ex, she seems, you know, to be in a better place, um, you know, a better position, you know, this episode. So, you know, I'm glad because who wants to stress, you know, over a man doing your pregnancy? That's not good. That's not good at all for the mom or the baby. <laughs> but then they switched over to Tanya. And Tanya, you know, she was preparing the bachelorette party, you know, for Eva. And which she was really surprised. Like, um, they were there for a bachelorette trip, a bachelorette party. So, I think Eva kind of expected somebody was going to throw something together. But I didn't think she expected it to be Tanya. Like, Tanya was the one that's going to pull it off. But, anywho, you know. She had uh, everything going on. I mean, the food, the the treats, the desserts, the drinks. I mean, it, it was set up really, really nice. And on top of that, you know, she had, you know, decided to have a PJ party. You know, a pajama, a grown folks, a grown folks pajama party. <laughs> and I don't know if y'all ever been to a, a grown folks pajama party, but I actually through a couple of them, you know, I've been a host to a couple of grown folks pajama jams and they are really, really fun. So maybe one day, you know, get your girls together, have it either like an all girls thing or you can do a couples thing, you know, invite your couple friends over and everybody wear their jammy jams and you play games and it's really, really fun. But anywho, when they had got on the subject of Dennis, um, telling Paul, which is Tanya's man, you know, that he's marrying Portia, Cynthia was like, hold up, hold up, wait a minute, um, you and Dennis getting married? Now, that was news to everybody, even though they had went, you know, they looked at rings and everything, I think that they're like, okay, Portia, we understand you're happy, you know, you got your baby, you got your man, but you thinking about marriage? And they're probably counting the months that they've been together. Everything is just moving so, so fast. But I don't know. We shall see. <laughs> we shall, They already went looking at rings. So I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think. It, I mean, they are moving really fast. And Portia have, you know, um, made a lot of bad choices in her past when it came to relationships and falling for men and... I just hope, you know, I just hope everything works out okay. I really do. I hope everything works out okay. But then Candy, for some reason, Candy seems to be feeling a little different, you know, about Dennis. And before, Candy was like the main one, you know, in everybody's ear telling everybody about Dennis and about his past and all these different women he's dated and he's like a ladies' man. You know, she was the one who was throwing, you know, all those stories around and stuff. Uh, rumors, tea, whatever you want to call it. And then, you know, of course, like I said, him still being in contact with his ex, the one that happened to get into a Porsche at Todd and Candy's party. But it seems like she's throwing up the red flag. Like, you know, finally accepting the fact that Dennis might end up really being in Porsche's life. And possibly till death do them part. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> but what do y'all think about Candy? Okay. When they had the pajama jam. And I'm, I'm like, hold up. Did somebody not get the memo? I'm looking at everybody. I mean, everybody got on their pajamas. They got on their pajamas. But they're all cute and they're sexy and, um... <laughs> Hi, and I'm like, what What does Candy have on? Like, really? What? And Candy was like, hold up. Why are y'all all looking so, you know, cute? And ain't that supposed to be a pajama? <laughs> Candy, she was like, okay, I'm up here the only one in the room looking like I got on my grandma's <laughs> pajamas. I was like, yeah, you really are dressed really down. I'm like, did they do that on purpose? Why is everybody else dressed up like everybody else knew? Portia had on some stilettos. Mind you, she's pregnant. But she had on some stilettos and looking all cute with her tight little tummy fitting, you know, get up and everything. And then we have Candy. 
<laughs> looking like she wearing some pajamas that should have been thrown out, you know, years ago. But anyway, anyway, they had a great time. They was enjoying themselves and everything. And I'm like, okay, Nene, this is supposed to be a fun evening, you know, exciting, fun. Um, they're going to play games. You know, it's a bachelorette party. So she came right in sat down, like, plopped right down next to Cynthia. I, was that Cynthia? I think that was Cynthia she was sitting next to. And she immediately started, okay, while Tanya is running around like a chicken with his head cut off, trying to make everything perfect for Eva and perfect for the lady, she done moved on. Okay, Nene, you don't, you, you done shaded me out this entire season. You done chopped me down like a tree this entire season. You don't give a damn about me or my man. You done made that very clear. Tanya has moved on. She she basically ignored Nene, but not being, like, shady, you know? You know how you can be grown and stuff, and you can be around somebody and not be phased? <laughs> That was Tanya. On the other hand, Nene was sitting over there. She just don't understand. She just don't get it. She Tanya has moved on. She she's like moved on. We just I think I really if Nene and uh her don't get their relationship back on track before this season end, I cannot see Tanya on the next season. I really can't. I think she's just trying to get through it to the end of the season. You know, just trying to get through it, keep getting a few more checks. That's what I think, you know, but we'll see. You'll Let me know what y'all think. But anyway, um, her and Greg, you know, they've been beefing and, you know, she's stressed out. She's under pressure. But like I said before, you know, she continually taking it out on Tanya, who I say, who I believe, I mean, it's pretty obvious. She's the weakest link of the group. So I think that's why Nene, although, you know, like I said at the beginning of the season, this my girl Tanya. We know each other from da 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 Yeah, she's this, she's that, and, you know, just full of kind words for her. And then after that, it just went downhill. <laughs> it just went downhill. But I think, you know, again, Tanya is weak, like, she might be strong in other areas, you know, uh, she's beautiful, she's smart, you know, she has her own bit. You, you know, she's business savvy, but she needs to grow some balls. If she really wants to survive <laughs> another season of The Housewives, she really need to buy, I don't know, grow them, buy them, rent them, <laughs> but she need to get some balls real soon. <laughs> But, um, as far as the stripper, y'all, oh my God, um, the stripper, <laughs> what do y'all think about the stripper? I was like, Lord, what is going on? Where did she find him? I mean, and they call him golden boy, golden boy. Like, is this a Japanese thing? Like, you know, the golden child, the golden... I don't know. But anyway, they named him... They named him... Well, his name is Golden Boy. And I'm up here, like, watching him do his little... I don't know what he was doing and or what that was in the crack of his you-know-what. I was like, what the... What is he wearing? I mean, in the front, it looked like a pamper. It looked like a grown person's pamper in the front. Um, it looked like he had a Depends in there. It looked like, I, I don't know, like an old T-shirt, an old rat twisted and tied up, and he had it roped between the crack of his, you know what? I'm like, what is this little man, yes, I said little man, wearing? <laughs> I don't know. I done seen some strippers. I done been to some bachelorette parties, and I'm like, Lord, is this the best they could do over there? <laughs> is this the best they could do? But then, um, when he sat down, when he sat down next to, uh, was it Marlo? I think it was, no, no, no. <laughs> it was Eva. When he sat down next to Eva, he crossed his legs all proper and ladylike. That's when I was really confused. I was like, Okay, what is he doing? He sat there and he put his hand on his knee and he started rubbing all over his legs and... Mm -mm. I hope they got their money back. 
I hope they got their money back. And where was his package? Like, whatever that thing was that he was wearing, he ripped that off, and then he had on this little thong with no thong. Where was his package? Now, I don't want to be stereotypical. I don't want to be stereotypical. But, um, where was his package? <laughs> Where was his back? It was like, what the heck? It looked like a, I'm telling you, it looked like a little kid that was playing in front of his sister's girlfriends, his sister's homegirls, like just trying to be, okay, little boy, little boy. Mm -mm -mm. Anyway, there was nowhere to put a tip. <laughs> but anyway, moving right along, moving right along. Um, When Nene called Greg, and she was trying to tell him, you know, what she was going through, you know, how she was feeling, how she wasn't having a good time in Tokyo. And she was blaming it on their situation. Like, I'm not having a good time over here because of what me and you got going on. Um, You can really tell that both of them, you know, that they're in their feelings. Um, They're both overwhelmed, stressed out, emotions all over the place, like all over the place. And she has really been, really, well, really tried to be, you know, very strong for him for a very long time during this whole process of him being sick. And he's dealing with the cancer head on. You know, I think, I want to say as best he could, as best he could. At the beginning of the season, um, it seemed like Greg was really like, determined, you know, to fight this cancer, to get through this cancer, to, uh, you know, oh, to kick this cancer's ass. That's what he said. I don't know if y'all remember, but that's what he said. And I'm like, I don't know. Do y'all get the feeling like Greg kind of, I, I hope he's not giving up. I, I really hope he's not giving up. Um, I think Nene has been so strong for him for so long, and I think she's kind of been an enabler to him uh, for him to push all his uh, his anger not with the cancer. You know what I mean? Like every uh, all the bad negative energy that he feels because of the cancer, he's like shoving it on her. Because she's right there. You know, she's like his main caregiver. Of course, his sons are around. You know, his friends are there. But Nene is right there. And I think, like, I think I said probably a couple episodes ago that I don't think Greg really wanted Nene to go on that trip. Um, I don't want to use the word spoiled because that's probably not the best word to use in this case. But I'm just trying to be really descriptive of how I think Greg is feeling like, he's used to Nene being around. He's used to him, her t helping to take care of him, um, helping to keep his spirits up, you know, motivate him, pray for him, you know. And I think he feels that she shouldn't be trying to go overseas to another country while he's dealing with this cancer battle. I don't know. I don't know. And, and it's like, again, he's dealing with it head on. And I think he probably feels like he's the one going through the cancer, you know, per se. Uh, or going through this battle, you know, per se. A lot more than her. Because he's the one who's sick. You know, he's the one who's sick. But a lot of people who's sick and have, like, diseases um, like cancer or you know, diseases that can take you out, you know, just like that. They feel like the person's taking care of them. Um, sometimes don't understand what they're going through. And of course you can't, you, you can't, how do you say, you can't empathize with them because you're not going through the cancer. You don't have the cancer, but you're going through it with them. You're still going through it with them. You're fighting them. I mean, they married. It's till death do they part. And I don't know. I think, I don't know. I've said before, I think they should go see a counselor. I don't know if they're seeing a counselor because we never see them see a counselor. We've never seen them go talk to a therapist. I really think that they should probably go see a therapist. 
Because cancer, I mean, it, everybody knows it can, boy, it can ruin a family. Like, not only losing uh, somebody if they happen to die, but it can suck up a lot of your energy, um, a lot of your emotions, a lot of your money. Like, a lot of your money. Even if you got the best insurance, <laughs> them medicines are expensive. And... <sighs> They just going through a lot. They going through a lot. And the person that, you know, although the pain and the hurt that somebody feels um, who is about to, like, lose a loved one to cancer, it might be a different feeling from somebody who is actually the sick person. But the caregiver still, in their minds, you know, they sometimes wonder, or think about the possibility of them dying. Like, I'm sure Nene thinks about this all the time. Especially when they thought they kicked Cancer's ass and it was gone. And then to find out it's it's not coming back. And then to find out Greg doesn't want to do chemo. And she she's there for him. And she, you know, she, she has said it several times. If he don't want to do chemo, Greg does not have to do chemo. It's his own choice. So, some people, you know, think differently about chemo. Some people's like, oh, it's good for you. It can help you fight. And then some people, oh, chemo is what kills people. I ain't heard people say it all the time. Chemo is what kills people. So, you know, as far as the sick person, once you're gone, you're gone. But then the people they leave behind, they have to, you know, they grieve forever. Sometimes the rest of their life. And they try to continue to go on, you know, without their loved ones. So it's like, <clears throat> the pain is different. The fears are different from the sick person and the caregiver. But I think it's like the pressure is equally the same. And Greg, for some reason, for some reason, I think he looks at Nene like, what's your problem? Why are you feeling like this? I'm the one who's sick. I'm the one who should be depressed. I'm the one who should be, you know, they feel like they go through it alone. No, no matter how much you help it. I think Greg just thinks like, I'm going through this alone. She didn't left. She didn't went to Tokyo, Japan. She's partying. She's kicking it while I'm here with an upcoming surgery. So I don't know. I don't know. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. But anyway, I think they do need some therapy. <clears throat> Bottom line, Therapy, counseling, church, pastor, something. You know, somebody to talk to and get them, help get them through this. But um, as far as, you know, Cynthia, I should have known that it would be Cynthia that she finally breaks down to. Like, again, we see her, Nene, being very, very strong, holding it all in, I mean, trying to hold in the tears, trying to be like this force of just force of strength that can't be broken. But because of Cynthia, you know, and her having a great relationship, that's probably the reason why she ended up breaking down with Cynthia. I mean, she finally just was like, she couldn't hold it anymore. I mean, she started crying, started telling her, you know, everything that she was feeling. You know, she finally let her walls down and let the tears flow and, you know, start letting it out. She really has been needing somebody to confide in. And it wasn't that they weren't there because Nene has friends. She has family. So it wasn't like her support system wasn't there. It was just Nene is that kind of person who don't want to, she don't want nobody to see her weak. That's, that's all that was. But finally, I'm glad she confided, confided in somebody. And um, those type of feelings, you just can't keep them inside of you. You know, <laughs> you, you really can't because those feelings can sometimes fester and take over. And the last thing I want to see is Nene going off on Greg. Because <laughs> Greg has been pissing Nene off. And the last thing I want to see is Nene going off on Greg. Do y'all remember that scene? Now, <laughs> it's not quite the same situation. <laughs> but <laughs> both their husbands are or was like sick or needed somebody to take care of them. Do y'all remember Kimberly Elise, a.k.a. Helen? 
and what she did to Steve Harris, a.k.a. Charles, in that movie Diary of a Mad Black Woman. <laughs> when she pushed her husband in that wheelchair and dumped him in that big old whirlpool. <laughs> and he was down there in the water <laughs> trying to stay above the water. He was like... Bleep, 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 bleep. <laughs> I'm like, I do not want to see Nene. I, I, <laughs> I don't want to see her going off on Greg and just finally crack and just finally like, okay, Greg, eh, I done had enough. But yeah, that that's what that reminds me of. Like, okay, this fool going to say one more thing to me and it's on and popping. <laughs> it's on and popping. But then when Nene received that big old bouquet of flowers, just like Portia did, I'm like, what's up, dude? Getting they fuck. How you order flowers from Tokyo? I mean, where do you know the, what order the flowers from? I don't know. But anywho, um, she got her some flowers. And when she started reading that letter that was attached to it, that note that was attached to it, I really, that's when I really started feeling sympathetic for Nini. I mean, she didn't expect him to send her anything. They were just on the phone, you know, like arguing. They, when she first got there, they was on the phone arguing. Um, she's been stressed out the whole entire trip. And the last phone call they had, he wasn't acknowledging her feelings. He was like, okay, and your vacation sucks. Okay, and <laughs> But, <laughs> so I'm like, when she started reading the note, reading a letter, and the, the the words that he put on the note, I'm like, dang. I mean, they were the most thoughtful and heartfelt. It, it was crazy because, like, one second he's like, okay, I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry you feel that way. Like, what do you want me to do? Then the next second... He's sending her like hundred dollar bouquet or probably more hundred two hundred dollar bouquet, and he's like pouring his heart out and telling her how much he loves. Man, Nene just broke down again. I was like, Lord have mercy. I mean, she is like on a roller coaster. Like I can't stand him. Oh, I love him. I can't stand him. Oh, I love him. You know. But who, Nene? It'll be okay. It'll, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Like Candy told Portia five years ago, the, the, the storm doesn't last forever. It's not going to rain forever. Eventually, the sun will come out. Eventually, the sun will come out. And then when they start showing all those older scenes, like remember when they had got married again and he had proposed, you know, the second time around and they showed their beautiful wedding? Man. It's going to be okay, Nene. It's going to death do y'all part. Till death do y'all part. And hopefully that won't come anytime soon because I'm continuing to pray for them. And I know other people are continuing to pray for them and have faith that he is going to eventually, very soon, kick cancer in the ass. Like he said at the beginning of the season. So hopefully that, that hopefully everything will work out for them. Everything will work out. But... When they had went to the, uh, when they had went, it was, uh, the ladies, what was it called? Um, is it the Samurai? Is that Martial Arts Studio? Is that what it was? Yeah, I think it was a Martial Arts Studio. And they were up there when they first walked in and they saw all those men with those Samurai. I, I can't never say that word right. Samurai, 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 whatever. Them swords. <laughs> And they was going around and charging at each other. And then one of the men fell down to the ground like he was dead and everything. They was like, oh, yeah, we ready for this. We ready for this. They gave Nene that sword. And I was like, oh, Lord, is she going to be fighting uh, Tanya? <laughs> I just knew they was going to pair her together with Tanya. But they didn't. But when Cynthia fell on that floor, when she was okay, when she was fake killed... <laughs> When she was fake stabbed, I was like, Cynthia, like, okay, Cynthia has no acting skills, <laughs> no acting skills. She got stabbed, and she must have sat down on the floor, sat down on the floor, just, and then, like, as if she was walking a runway, you know, looking all graceful and stuff, she just laid back, like, <laughs> 
I'm like, what is she doing? <laughs> she just sat down on the floor and then she was like, just laid back all graceful and stuff. I'm like, Cynthia, you dead. They just killed you. They just killed you. You need to fall to the floor. <laughs> Act like you in pain. <laughs> she was just like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, okay. But then when, oh my God, what's her name? Uh, <laughs> when uh, Shamari, Shamari, she was up there. She was like, um, no, I'm sorry, Candy. Candy, hands down, hands down. The award goes to for the uh, best actress. <laughs> that would have to go to Candy. I mean, best actress in the scene, hands down, Candy Burris. She had it down pack. When it was her time to die, Candy, like she's been practicing it her whole life. <laughs> like she has been practicing her death her whole life. She, okay. Y'all have to see it. If y'all didn't watch this episode, you have to go back and you have to watch Candy's death scene because she killed it. <laughs> it was all in slow motion, all dramatic and stuff. I was like, okay, okay, Candy, that's how you fake your death. But anyway, um, <laughs> that was too funny. But they was having a lot of fun. But on the final night, when the ladies got all dressed up, and, you know, they were in their kimonos, and they went out to dinner. It kind of, like, just hit me. Like, do all the Japanese people, like, do they really sit down on the floor, like, every time they eat a meal? Or is this just, like, in restaurants? Because... And they didn't sit them right on the floor. Not this time. They didn't sit them right on the floor. They had like some low seats, like a low bench. And it looked like real cushiony and comfortable and everything. But I'm like, do they really sit on the floor? On the Somebody let me know. Let me know. I'm going to have to look that up. Because I really never thought about it before. But I'm thinking like, what happens when you get old? What happens... If your knees go bad, what happens, you know, if you're injured? Like, is there an exception for the rule? <laughs> Can you pull out a chair? Is there an exception for the rule? <laughs> but anyway, that just gave me something to think about, you know, on their trip. Because everywhere they went, they like trying to sit them on the floor. But anyway, um, Eva, on to a more serious note. Since she's getting married... And, you know, also dealing with her father. I mean, not her father, but her grandfather. You know, he's been sick. And she, she you know, she want to show appreciation to the ladies. They've been there for her. You know, at first, when she took her last trip with her friends and the wedding party and didn't even invite Nene or any of the ladies, they was really, really, really hurt. Like, butt hurt. So, you know, to show them some appreciation, she invited them on this trip. And she was just basically telling them, you know, I really appreciate you guys. I'm going through a lot right now in my life, and I'm so glad you guys are here. And so she came up with the idea for them to each go around the room and, you know, start stating, like, the, your highs and your wonderful experiences, you know, that's going on in your lives right now. And then also, also... Let everybody know your lows, you know, or something that you've been struggling with, you know, recently or lately. And when Cynthia mentioned, you know, how her lows right now is her one and only daughter, Noel, you know, soon leaving for college. And, of course, if you a parent and you have a kid who has left for college, had to leave the nest, move out of town... You understand exactly where Cynthia is going through. So I understand it's kind of like you happy, but you sad, you're nervous, you're anxious, you proud of them, but you're scared. I mean, all these emotions <laughs> go through your head and I only got sons, but still I felt the same way. And my youngest one is about to go to college this fall. So I'm going to go through it all over again. But anyway, um, and then she was like, you know, as far as her highs, after Peter, you know, after she uh, separated from Peter and they got divorced and everything, she vowed to never get married again. She didn't think that she would ever meet anybody else. Nobody else, you know, she had, okay. 
She was with Noel's father. She was with, you know, people after him. Then she met Peter. And then after that, she met, what was his name? Will. <laughs> she met Will. <laughs> and we saw how that went. But, you know, she didn't have too many, you know, successful relationships after Peter. And so she gave up. She was like, okay, I'm not getting married. I'll date. I'll date. Nothing serious. Remember she said that? See, Y'all, if y'all really been following the show, y'all remember specifically when she said that. No more serious relationships. And then it seems like she keeps getting in serious relationships. <laughs> but anyway, this one she thinks is it. She really thinks Mike Hill is the one. And that he possibly like, might make her change her mind. And I really, I love Cynthia. I like love Cynthia. I think she is probably... Let's see, out of all the ladies, I probably like Cynthia the best, and then Nene, and then, oh, maybe Portia or Candy, you know, it's a battle between them two, uh, but you know, I really like Cynthia, and I really wish her, you know, happiness, because she's a great person, she's a wonderful person. And Mike must have some serious long-distance skills. Some serious long-distance skills and capabilities. <laughs> to make her feel that way, you know, besides... but Because they really don't get to see each other much. Besides FaceTime, you know, they hardly see each other. So when I say some serious long-distance skills and capabilities, y'all just gonna have to read through the line. <laughs> y'all just gonna have to read through the line. But then when it was time for Candy's turn, they was like, okay, Ken... Okay, Candy girl. Now, you know Candy. She always portrayed that her entire life is fabulous. Nothing ever goes wrong. Everything's perfect. Her relationship, her marriage, her kids, you know, all that. Her businesses, you know, everything. So, they was like, okay, Candy, just give us one or two things. <laughs> just one or two things that are going on great in your life and then cut it short because it'll take all day. It'll take all day for you to be sitting there and bragging about everything that's going great in your life. But, you know, they had to throw a little shade. You know, a little shade. But anyway, um, Portia, she was telling them, you know, her lows was kind of like Cynthia's. Um, after she separated from Cordell, now, y'all remember years ago, when she was married to Cordell, and basically he treated her like property. He treated her like property. Um, after she divorced him, she kind of like, everybody she met, nothing worked out. She was kind of like having the same experiences with Cynthia. And really, really, really wanted to be in a relationship and wanted it to work. She wanted a baby. She wanted a family. And it seemed like it was never going to happen. And she kind of like gave up on it. You know, she kind of lost hope. But then she was like, when I met Dennis, my whole life done changed. My low, he done changed my life. He done gave her new life, literally. He done gave her new life. She about to have a baby. And she really started getting emotional, you know, because a lot of women, just like her and Cynthia, you know, they when they finally, finally have hopes again, uh, you know, after having all those failed relationships, you know, a lot of failed relationships, and then to finally have hope again that this is it, this is going to be your successful relationship, your happily ever after, you know, that's a really good feeling. So I get it. I get it. I do get it. But then, Candy, I was really, really shocked. Like, I'm really happy for Portia. And everybody else seems really, even, okay. Now, Cynthia, she did say, right after Portia, you know, said her little spiel. She was like, you know what? I'm so happy for you. How could, how could someone not be happy for you? And you could see Candy looking all around like, y'all see Candy's eyes? Like, she was just looking, you know how Candy is. She be looking all, you know, 
And I was like, what is going on in Candy's head? But then when she opened her mouth and she was like, I, I got something to say. I was like, oh my God, what is Candy going to say? What is Candy going to say? <laughs> because all season long, she has been throwing shade at Portia's relationship. So I'm like... And then earlier in the episode, it seemed like, you know, like I said, it seemed like she's accepting the fact that Portia's happy with Dennis. And when she started breaking down and crying and tearing up and apologizing, I was like, oh my God, that is so sweet. That is like really sweet because Candy, she saw what she sees in Portia is exactly what she sees in her own relationship. When... Candy first started dating Todd. Her mom, y'all remember her mom? She was all in her relationship. Everybody in Candy's life, not everybody, but a lot of people in Candy's life was like, oh, Todd is just out to use you. He he got he take, trying to use you so he can take your money, so you can take care of him. You're going to be his sugar mama. I mean, her mother did not want her to be with Todd at all. She, she did everything possible to deter Candy from continuing a relationship with him. So she understands what it's like for people to be like prejudging him or judging him incorrectly just because she has a whole bunch more money than him and he doesn't. It's like, can't nobody just love me for me? Can't, are you telling me a man will never love me for me? A man will never, <laughs> you know, I mean, that has to be a, a horrible feeling for somebody to tell you, oh, that dude just wants you because you got money. Like, that's all you got to offer. So, you know, she was like, you know, I get it. I get it. The things that you see in him, the things that he is doing for you and how he makes you feel, that's the same stuff that I experienced with Todd when everybody kept telling me he ain't the one. So, you know, I'm, I'm really glad that they, it seemed like they made up, they hashed things out, and they again, again promised to work on their relationship and, you know, communicate more. Which is exactly what they did at the beginning of the season. <laughs> and you saw what happened. You saw what had happened. But hopefully, hopefully, this time, I mean, Candy gave her a very heartfelt apology. You know? So, I, I really hope that, you know, their relationship goes back to where it was before... <laughs> before they got into it. Because remember y'all, before that um mess with uh Phaedra, you know the the date rape accusations and threesomes yeah y'all remember all that. Y'all remember that. Her and Candy had a very good relationship. So, you know, I really hope they get back to that point. But anyway, y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode. Um, what do y'all think about Nene still having, um, still being upset with Tanya? Um, let me know how you feel about Candy. Do y'all think she was really sincere? I thought she was really sincere in her apology. I really, really do. Um, and as far as Dennis, Dennis and Portia, uh, at first, you know, I kind of thought Dennis was kind of maybe a little shady, but how do y'all feel about Dennis now? Let me know how y'all feel about Dennis. And, of course, of course, you guys, please, again, keep um, Eva in your prayers. Keep Nene in your prayers. I know I, I done said that a few times after each of my reviews. But, seriously, <laughs> they are going through a lot right now. And it's real life stuff, like real life. And if you ever have to deal with anybody you love, dealing with cancer, dying from cancer, uh, having to bury them, I mean, you can never have enough prayers. So, Again, please keep them in your thoughts and prayers. And again, let me know what you thought about this episode. Put it all in the comment section. <laughs> and in the meantime and in between time, prime time squad, as usual, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out.